My name is Justin Ziegler. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Jay-Z Helps of Florida Injury Law Firm. Today I'm going to be talking about neck injuries, particularly those through car, truck, and motorcycle accidents when another driver's carelessness is the cause of your neck injury. You can see this is the neck. These are the vertebrae in the neck. So again, this article is going to focus on car accidents. What are the two most common types of objective neck injuries that you may have? It's going to be the herniated disc and bulging disc. You can see this is a herniated disc from a client of mine that I represented. Here's the herniation right there. I've written separate articles on neck injuries from car accidents. I've written separate articles on herniated disc cases from car accidents and separate articles on herniated disc cases from slip and falls. Those are the links that you can look in the description of the video. You'll see a link to this article and then you can get to the article and go around and look at the links. Bulging discs, I wrote a separate article on that. You can again look at that link. This is a neck injury case for a client of mine who was T-boned at an intersection, we settled for $100,000. He was diagnosed with a herniated disc in his neck. Now, one of the common themes you're gonna see with neck injury cases is all things being equal. When someone, another driver's carelessness causes your neck injury and there's a lot of damage to your car, the case is worth more because it is easier to prove that your neck injury was caused by the accident. I represented another client. We settled for $95,000 in a car accident. He was hit, hit by a drunk driver. He had a herniated disc in his neck as well. Surgery was recommended. Generally speaking, all things equal, that drives up the full value of the case. What does full value mean? Full value is the value of the case without reducing uh, the value for your fault for difficulty proving the neck injury was caused by the accident. This is a two herniated discs in the neck. This is the face and this uh, the head, this is the neck. We settled that for $70,000. She had a neck injury, my client was a pedestrian, not in the crosswalk, which lowered the value of her case. She was hit by a car. She also had some other injuries as well. We represented a motorcycle rider when we settled his neck injury case for $52,000. He also had other injuries as well. This is the uh, one of my client's trucks, a pickup truck. We settled his case for $39,000. He had a neck injury. Uh, it was an aggravation of a prior neck injury, which just means it was a worsening uh, of a prior neck injury. Uh, just understand that if you have a clean neck, meaning if um, you don't have any problems with your neck before the, in before the accident, all things equal, the case is worth more than someone like this gentleman who had some neck injuries prior to the accident. Again, what's a common theme? Why is this, uh, I think, a fair settlement? A lot of damage to his car. If there was zero damage to his car, the odds are the insurance company would have offered a lot less money. This was also a T-bone accident. The insurance companies involved were Geico and uh, Star and Shield. This is another client of mine who hurt his neck in an accident. We set up for $25,000 with USAA, another driver, uh, crashed into him. You can see there is significant damage to the rear of his truck. Fortunately, the other driver had no bodily injury liability insurance. The only case we had was against my client's insurer, USAA, and they paid us the limits of $25,000. He also had some other injuries as well. I settled another neck injury case. This is US-1. The, uh, the accident happened near here. We settled for $25,000. The client had neck and back injuries. It was a rear end accident. This is another, this is a rollover case that we handled, uh, although the damage to the pickup truck looks horrible, the gentleman only treated for a few times with the doctor and his pain went away. We settled it for $20,000. He also had some loss of sensation to his fingertip. And one of the things you, you've probably learned from hearing me speak about all these already is neck injuries can often come along with other pain and other stuff that you have. So you need to look at, when you're looking at values of neck, of, of cases where someone's complaining of their neck, problems or injuries, you need to look for cases that just talk about the neck injury, verdicts that just talk about the neck injury so you can learn how much a neck injury is worth. Another claim we handled, we settled for $20,000 for a neck injury. Our client was rear-ended. Um, the chiropractor suggested she meet with an orthopedic doctor who, to discuss uh, having surgery. She was hit by a reckless driver. Another neck injury claim, we represented a client who was in a car crash in Palmetto Bay, Florida, which is in South Florida, South Miami-Dade County. We settled for $20,000. This is uh, another claim that we had. Um, this is the front of, the, of, our, of our client's car. The back also got rear-ended. She had a herniated disc. We settled for $17,000. Represented a passenger who was hit by a drunk driver. 
Uh, very little medical treatment. Um, he hurt his neck and we settled for $14,000. The drunk driver was arrested, which generally helps the value of the claim and you need to be sure if you're hit by a drunk driver to request the entire DUI file. We represented someone else who received $10,000 for her neck injury from a car crash in Broward. It was a hit and run driver. And unfortunately, her limits were $10,000 for her uninsured motors policy. We represented a man who was hit by a pickup van uh, for a little bit less than $10,000. He hurt his neck and some other stuff he had. The paramedics at the scene put um, a neck brace on him. If you have a chance, if you're with a friend or family member, if they can take a photo of that, that may add value to the claim. Because it shows that you were hurt and it allows a jury or insurance adjuster to see what's going on. State Farm ins insured the driver in that case. We settled another neck sprain for $7,500 for a client of ours who was hurt in a minor car accident. Again, the, the less damage to the car, generally speaking, all things equal, the lower the settlement. He had an MRI of the cervical spine and the neck pain went away. There was another case, a $1.9 million verdict. This is not my case for a neck surgery from a car crash. One of the things you'll notice that gets or has the ability to uh, result in these huge verdicts, what I consider a huge verdict, $1.9 million is surgery. This person had a three-level disc replacement. The discs were taken out and replaced. And she also had epidural injections to her neck. This is a $1 million verdict for a neck surgery case. Uh, the person claimed the C4, C5 disc herniation. This is a $350,000 award for a uh, neck injury. There was no surgery. Someone was hurt on a, an employee was hurt on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship and she received a total uh, $192,000 for pain and suffering for her neck injury. Again, you can click on the links and read about all these articles. This is not my case again. Um, car crash victim won $211,000 for back, neck, and ankle injuries. The herniation was at C4, C5 level of her neck. In that case, in many car accidents, if you have a neck injury, it's one of the things that makes neck injuries a little tougher, or a lot tougher, is a jury usually in most Florida car accident cases needs to say the injury or neck injury is permanent. If a jury says, checks the box in the verdict form that says no, it's not permanent, you get zero for pain and suffering in most Florida car accident cases, but not all. The, the, you have to know the law very, very well. In other case, a jury awarded $100,000 for pain and suffering for a neck injury. Jury also awarded $120,000 for medical care. Keep in mind, a jury can award money for your past medical care and future medical care. In another case, a lady got $180,000 for epidurals, which are injections to her neck. Unfortunately, only $15,000 for pain and suffering. So it just shows you verdicts can be all over the place and there's no guarantee. I've already discussed this, but it's harder to get money, all things being equal, in a neck injury case than a fracture case. Why? A fracture, every doctor is gonna say a fracture may be caused by the accident in a lot of neck injury cases. The insurance company, State Farm, Geico, whoever, will hire their doctor to say, Okay, you may have had neck pain from the car crash, but it should have resolved between after four to six weeks. Remember, it's your burden to prove the neck injury was caused by the accident. And then some doctors are going to give you a hard time. The insurance company doctors are going to say that or may say that, that your neck injury was not caused by the accident. I hope you got something out of this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Call us at 888-594-3577. That's 888 888- Jay-Z helps. We serve people throughout the entire state of Florida. If you've been injured and someone else is at fault or if you've been injured on a cruise ship or boat, I look forward to hearing from you now.